And thank you all for joining us from all over the world uh, to this another uh, uh, guesty event. My name is Omer Rabin. I'm the Managing Director of Americas at uh, Guesty and also Head of the Global Strategy Group for Guesty, but actually coming out of FMS today, representing uh, Europe. And this is a chance to uh, invite and introduce uh, our esteemed guests that are here today. First, on the left here, we have Alex Ellison, who's the founder and CEO of uh, Stay D. Alexander, a home hotel collection and a very innovative company in the space, coming live, I believe, from Denver, Colorado. Hey, Alex, thanks for being with us. Heading south now to Cape Town, South Africa, a city that I 15 minutes ago called the most beautiful one on earth, but don't tell my mom. Uh, we have Richard Marshall, who's the founder of Knox Rentals, another uh, loved guest customer. Richard, thanks for joining us. And uh, very proud to introduce a colleague of mine from uh, the Guesty Los Angeles office, our director of sales for the Americas, Joseph Beinstock. Thank you for joining us, Joseph. I'm going to give very short introductory remarks, and we're going to have a little bit of a Guesty demo. It's not a Guesty demo of like, please know this is Guesty. The idea is to show very specific features that we have heard are very useful specifically at times like this that you might want to consider to use if you're not using them already if you're a customer of Guesty, and if you're not just to know what technology enables out there specifically at times like this and then we're going to have discussions led by d alexander and knox rentals about what they have done in the last few months and what have served them in really weathering the storm of covid and getting ready for the new normal in the market we're then going to have panel discussion that I will moderate, and I'm looking forward to getting some of your questions. We received a few already, and we're hoping to get a few more. A little bit about Guesty for those of you who don't know it. So we are a platform that is really created by property managers for property managers and offer end-to-end -end solution that really simplifies the complex operational needs around short-term rental property management. And in other ways of saying that, if it's something that you do every single time, why not automate that? Why not remove all the hassle of the repetitive processes so you property managers can actually focus on what counts, which is creating the experience, the offline experience that you want with your guests, thinking about how to expand and how to build your business and getting strategic decisions while we do um, all the operational needs and cover all of those uh, through automation uh, using best-in-class technology. We're not just a solution, we're also a platform that is one-stop shop and we collaborate and have amazing relationships with all the OTAs out there, as well as the biggest marketplace offering you a lot of different technologies that are all vetted by us and are best in breed in a myriad of different categories. And the idea is, it doesn't matter what's your inventory, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we're gonna be able to work with you to create the ultimate tech stack based on the changing needs of your inventory and the market. And again, you can find all of that in one place. You can find all the information in our website. And I can assure you that Joseph's team will be very happy to jump on a call with you and to explain what else we can offer. Um, specifically, you can see that one of the most important things in the last few months have been contact-free stays in private rentals. It became a guest expectation. I love meeting uh, uh, people, but not so much now. I wanna be able to walk into a, a a rental property that is completely sanitized and ready for my use without meeting another person from outside the family. And there's a lot of different technology out there that can serve for that purpose, as well as many other purposes. This is just one use case that has become very, very popular in the last few months, and we are serving. Guests today are booking short-term rentals over traditional hotel stays, and this is not surprising. One of the things that we are seeing in the last few months is that the tourism cake, if you will, did not grow significantly, but the piece of the pie that is going for short-term rental has really grown very, very significantly. The reason is contact-free stay, you can get in without having to go through a, a check-in counter or a concierge. Private homes mean avoiding crowded hotels in common areas. There isn't a shared pool or a shared lobby area. There's less guest turnover. You don't have a cleaning crew that is cleaning 300 rooms and contacting basically the what 300 different guests left behind. There are fewer shared high touch surfaces such as door handles or elevator buttons. Um, and there's a lot of other options that are very meaningful like low risk dining that we are mentioning here, all very, very important. For that reason, we see really the, the piece of the pie that is attributed to our part of the market being significantly higher than before. So you are in the right category. And the recovery is uncertain travel trends and our data, and we collect data from 
thousands of our customers and all the reservations they have with all the different channels in 80 different markets, it all points to the fact that short-term rental ecosystem is really being poised for growth. There is a lot of uh, pent-up demand, a lot of it we're already seeing, and we'll share in a second very exciting news about this summer actually being better objectively than last summer in this category. And we believe this is just the beginning of the real renaissance in short-term rental properties. Again, reason to be optimistic. August alone, and we're still waiting for uh, the numbers from September that are in and we're analyzing them, but specifically for August, there's a global increase of 10% in new reservations globally, not just compared to previous months of pandemic, compared to pre-pandemic August last year. And specifically for the United States, it is really recovering quicker as of now, August actually represented a 15% increase year over year, and in fact, a record month for the industry. We also see it in a lot of metropolitan cities. So if you remember in, or if you went to one of our events in May, June, July, or even August, we talked a lot about the fact that um, suburban and rural properties are seeing a lot of great metrics. It's now actually shared also with cities. And so Atlanta and all the numbers that you see are August 2020 compared to 2019, 70% more in Atlanta, 29% more in Las Vegas that is really waking up to all the people that missed being there and enjoy all that the city has to offer. 128% in Dallas and 110% in Miami. The reason is a lot of people who wanted to go on beach vacations outside of the United States headed to Miami, a place they usually will not frequent necessarily in August and they did this year. And so again, very, very encouraging numbers. And part of it is around utilizing tech to navigate this period. It's crucial in order to come out stronger than ever before. The expectations of customers are different. They are booking later. They expect different terms. They expect to walk in without meeting a person. They expect some kind of uh, communication way beyond what they were used to uh, uh, expect before. And you as a property management company really need to adjust. And we'll hear today what other property managers have done that allow them to do so. And so now as promised, I'm gonna Pass the ball to Joseph Beinstock to do a very quick demo of four elements in the Guesty solution that we see our customers using uh, and being very successful in utilizing them to actually get more bookings, more revenue, and better reviews. And so with that, I'm going to stop sharing and pass the ball to you, Joseph. Thank you, Omer. Um, first of all, what I would like to do is uh, discuss guest communication. Uh, as uh, guests have always preferred crystal clear communication with hosts, and right now there is much more uncertainty than ever before, if pre-coronavirus guests were worried about checking in seamlessly, now they are also concerned about travel restrictions, measures that have been taken to ensure their health and safety, and more. With our unified inbox, all guest correspondence is centralized and managed in one place, so nothing slips through the cracks. This smart messaging tool means users can respond in Guesty to an inquiry received through a booking channel, email, or text message, and now even WhatsApp, answering them all via the Guesty inbox. Even without uncertainty of COVID-19, guest communication has always been one of the most time-consuming aspects of property management companies. Guesty's 24-7 guest communication services provides our users with accurate and timely support around the clock so that you have time to focus on growing your business. With last minute bookings and cancellations more prominent right now, it's easy to lose sight of the critically important task between booking and check-in. With Guesty's pre-state tools, a suite of features, check-in form, rental agreements, authority reporting, and auto messaging, our users can automate and customize tasks to make it easy to collect all the information and documents you need to protect your properties, comply with local regulations, and deliver an outstanding guest experience. After noticing that travelers were booking rentals for longer periods of time, Guesty opened the platform to support extended stays of 28 days or more. By doing so, this helped users incorporate flexible inventory, short, mid, and long-term stays into their portfolio to achieve a reliable, a short stream of revenue for longer periods of time. Just a reminder, I'll now show a quick demo 
of a few of the tools I just mentioned. So the first thing that I would like to show you is the unified inbox. Basically the unified inbox unifies guest communications in one place. We split the unified inbox into three columns. On the left side, what you can see here basically is all the incoming messages. Uh, you can filter the messages if you want according to assignees, reservation status, listing tags, and more. Uh, you can also support team collaboration and also create different views for yourself. For example, if you want to focus more on lead management and look at your increase or reserve dates, or for example, if you want to see um, all of the guests that plan to check in tomorrow, you have here the different tools to allow you to do that and communicate with guests much more efficiently. You can see all of the incoming messages, but you can also see if they have a star badge, that means it's a repetitive guest. You can see the status of the guest. For example, if it's um, a non-confirmed guest or a confirmed guest before, during, or after the stay. In the middle column, you can see the entire history of communication. All of the messages from the guests, messages from the hosts, and all of the messages that are incoming from other team members, as well as automated messages that are sent out from the guest system, so you never lose a message. Our unified inbox also supports different methods of communication uh, via email, WhatsApp messages, text messages, internal notes between you and your team members, as well as messages from the booking channels. We also offer save reply templates, so you can make sure that you are well prepared to any questions, if it's pre-stay, during the stay, if it's questions about extended stays, uh, you can create save reply templates, make sure that all of your team are aligned on the answers. And on the right side, you have all of the information about the reservation. So you have the reservation overview, including custom fields that you can include to support any type of uh, extended stay possibilities. For example, you have information about your listing in case the guest is asking any relevant questions, information about the guest, which will enable you to screen the guest much more efficiently, um, automated messages that are scheduled and that were sent, and also additional information that you can share with the guests once they ask you questions about their upcoming stay. In addition to the unified inbox and part of the communication package, we also provide a wealth of event triggered messaging tools. Uh, one of them, the automated message, um, is a tool that can trigger multiple automated messages according to specific events. If it's a check-in, check-out, booking confirmation, and so on, you can decide exactly when to send out the message according to hours or to days. We also support conditions. This is a very unique and, and special tool to Guesty, which allows you to add multiple conditions to the message to make sure that you provide the most accurate information to the guests. You can, for example, use conditions such as sending messages according to the channel, advance notice, number of nights, uh, for example, send out a message if the check-in form has been completed, and much more. You can also define what listings or property tags will be included, as well as decide who to send the message, and of course, completely customize the message with our custom fields and also dynamic fields that you can add to make sure that it's uniquely sent out to each guest. Now, as an extended stay, but also a pre-stay tool, we have our document manager. The document manager basically allows you uh, to trigger different documents uh, to guests, such as a check-in form. The check-in form is a great pre-stay tool. Whenever you have a check-in confirmation, a, um, a booking confirmation, you can send out the check-in form. They can fill out their information if you need the information for authority reporting, marketing purposes, um, and also simply to prepare for their stay, you can definitely do that. In addition to that, we also have our rental agreements, a great tool for extended stays and also a pre-stay tool, which allows you to send out a rental agreement to the guests and then they can electronically 
sign the agreement and then you can have this, of course, in your records, in your guest fee system. Just to add to what Joseph is saying, that has been very, very useful for a lot of our customers who are looking to actually take short-term rental uh, uh, properties and pretty quickly reposition them as midterm in case they want to actually make sure that they uh, 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 reserve the occupancy very high at the event of a lockdown or any kind of borders closure anywhere in the world. Exactly. Um, and in addition to the document manager, we also have a very robust reporting tool. Basically, the reporting tool allows you to create a lot of different reports. Uh, for example, you can decide on hundreds of data points uh, to create your own custom report and to make sure that you are well prepared for the stay of the guests as a pre-stay tool, but also you can decide to view all of the reservations that are extended stay reservations. And then according to that, simply you can make sure that you are well prepared for the extended stay. So that's something that you can definitely do. The next feature that I would like to discuss is the Guesty Marketplace. So in terms of distribution, we can distribute uh, to plenty of booking channels through our direct integrations, if it's Airbnb, Booking.com, VRBO, or through our channel management partners. Uh, you can select uh, channels if these are channels that are focused on extended stays or on vacation rentals, urban, and so on. Uh, and thus um, you can manage your flexible uh, rental inventory from your Guesty platform. In addition to the distribution channels, we also have, of course, the Guesty Marketplace. The Guesty Marketplace offers close to 80 applications. These applications can support a various, of course, um, inventory type and, of course, um, different parts of the guest journey, if it's a pre-stay or during the stay, anything from managing guest experience, revenue management, analytics, and so on. The next feature that I would like to touch on is the multi-calendar. Basically, the multi-calendar is a great tool to see all of your inventory in one place. So you can see your short-term, mid-term, and long-term inventory uh, you can manage the rates directly from the calendar. You can see more information about the reservation from the same place. You can send out quotes, create reservations, and create new inquiries uh, for better lead management. And of course, you can tag your properties according to the status of the property. For example, if it's a mid-stay or short-stay property and so on. So this is a very robust tool. Uh, which is very flexible and you can decide exactly how to use it uh, to benefit your business. And in terms of the last tool that I would like to touch on is revenue management. In terms of revenue management, basically you can create different rate strategies for different uh, listings. Of course, these strategies can be uh, long-term rental strategies, short-term rental strategies. They can be according to location. And you can create for each strategy uh, different rules. For example, for holidays and events, um, if it's seasonality, recurring days, and also upcoming availability, you can decide exactly what rate rules are needed. Again, depending on the type of inventory, and depending, of course, on the different, um, the different uh, rule setup that you would like to apply. We also have rate plans as well as promotions that can be synchronized directly with Booking.com. Phenomenal. Joseph, first of all, thank you so much for showing that. And, and again, as we said before, the name of the game right now is, is agility, is the ability to actually quote unquote, roll with the punches and adjust your business based on what's happening out there in different parts of the world and in different cities that you might be operating in. Everything that Joseph shared right now is exactly made uh, in order to allow you all to do this. Joseph, thank you for squeezing a one hour product demo into eight minutes. 
Thank you again. And if you have any questions, I think the main question people ask is, what exactly are the properties on the multi calendar that the nightly rate was 3,746? I would like to see that listing. Um, but thank you so much for showing all of that. Let's talk also about the fact that last minute bookings are now in. So planning is very yesterday, as we shared before. If we are comparing to the same time last year, in the US alone, we see 16% decrease in reservation for Thanksgiving booking. But if we judge based on Labor Day or 4th of July, it is likely that the actual bookings, the actual bookings looking back after Thanksgiving are gonna be higher. And so we expect less people to book those in advance, but actually the occupancy to be higher than 2019. And again, we'll have to see. There's a 35% decrease in reservation for Christmas booking and a 33% decrease in reservation for New Year's Eve bookings. It doesn't mean that you need to like freak out and drop the rates right now. And again, we have the yield management uh, 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 tools out there in our marketplace to help you plan around that. It means that most of the reservations are gonna come last minute. We expect those numbers to fluctuate and rise two or three weeks before each major holiday. And most of the reservations, and that might be a little bit unfortunate, are actually only coming seven days uh, before the check-in date. Some of them are actually coming day off. And now it's time for the main dish. Again, very privileged to have two of our favorite customers, even though we love everybody just the same. Uh, Alex Allison, the founder and CEO of D. Alexander, joining us from Denver, and Richard Marshall, the founder of the Knox Group, joining us from Cape Town, South Africa. Gentlemen, we're going to start with you, Alex, sharing a little bit about what you guys have seen. You are one of the customers that we have seen really adjusting your entire positioning, messaging, marketing, and operation very early in the game in late March. Would love to hear, you know, what exactly you have done and what are the results that you've seen. And with that, I'm going to pass the ball to you, Alex. Great. Thanks for having me, Omer. Yeah, you mentioned uh, a few items there. Um, one, agility is, is the name of the game and, um, you know, responding in the moment and, and um, being uh, iterating and, and solving problems. I think that's one one area of, uh, you know, the industry that I saw um, guests you really shine over, over the course of the last seven months as you all you all went into action and um, you know thank you for for all that you've done in in the industry so for us d alexander is on a mission to create a new asset class and what that means is that um, we are an owner uh, operated home hotel brand and really what that speaks to is that um, we're striving to deliver something unique in the marketplace and um, you know, for us, it means radical consistency from home to home, coupled with brand standards from home to home. Those brand standards include the same sheets, bedding, linens, care products, uh, the same look and feel, um, you know, regardless of, of the market that you're in um, or regardless of the channel that you came through. So um, what enables us to accomplish that is, is having control over our homes, um, which is a function of owning a, a portfolio. So we bring in uh, partners and uh, acquire assets or homes. Uh, we apply our brand standards and operate those homes with a very um, you know, specific operating style and, and principles around those homes. And you know, pre-COVID, pre-COVID, we we focused heavily on um, you know some of what you saw coming out of COVID, which is uh, you know a tech-enabled experience from home to home. Uh, but in parallel, it was homes that were equipped and designed and, and hand-selected for um, you know optimal utilization by groups and households. I think the what groups and households need is very different than say what a couple needs or what individuals need that are traveling. Um, in parallel, we recognize that groups and uh, groups and households were uh, traveling in different ways. And the reason they were traveling in different ways was the result of just size and um, size of the party that was traveling coupled with why they were traveling. Um, so consistency was extremely important to that equation. In parallel, uh, having a product offering that was designed and suited for some of the complexities that come with, with group travel. 
So that meant um, you know, flexibility from home to home, optionality, having multiple homes in one given market for uh, groups and households to, to select or, or to shift and move from. Uh, but in parallel, it meant that the homes were optimized for what people were doing in their day-to-day -day life. And, and what we recognized was that um, our customers were utilizing our homes to live in, uh, meaning they, they weren't just looking for a vacation, um, and that's reflective in, uh, in really the duration of the stay, in which in our marketplace or the markets that we uh, operate in, the duration, of, the duration of stay is traditionally, you know, 2x what a duration would stay, of stay would be in, in a major metro. And that's reflective of, um, you know, how someone's using the home in parallel, having benefits and amenities that were designed to play in uh, work from anywhere. That was core to kind of our business from the start. When COVID hit, it um, you know, enabled us to, to take a step back and, and uh, look at why we started the company uh, in parallel with it enabled us to listen to our customers. And that meant uh, reinventing our product offering and in many ways, um, you know, doing, a, doing a 180 uh, with respect to how we were operating our business. So we launched Dest Destination Isolation, which was a, um, it was a campaign as well as a, it was a product offering that uh, design, it was designed in, to support kind of this new normal, which what we heard in the marketplace was that um, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty. And um, you know, life by default is, is uncertain in parallel, uh, but COVID just gonna amplify that. Um, so that uncertainty meant that people needed flexibility, optionality, and uh, so on. So we created a product offering that aligned with that. Um, you know, we focused on drivable destination oriented markets. That's core to, to, to what we do today, but um, you know, enabling us to uh, focus more closely to those markets um, enabled us to attract an audience that uh, aligned with our product offering. In parallel, we have benefits in a tech-enabled experience that are inherently designed for living. So COVID was a catalyst. COVID was a catalyst to a number of consumer trends that were already happening over the course of the last uh, three, four, five years. And if you look at the patterns, uh, and, and align those patterns, you would have you you would have came up with the conclusion that COVID was uh, work working remotely and consistency and standards and flexibility that was already on the horizon. Ten years from now, it just compressed that life cycle and brought it to the forefront um, you know, sooner. What we heard from the marketplace uh, was also the you know the market was saying stay home, but in parallel, our customers were saying they needed a place to isolate. They needed a place to distance effectively. Uh, they needed a home for health and wellness. They needed a home to to live, work, and play in which their current home wasn't conducive or designed to stay at home or hunker down for long durations of time. Uh, so while the marketplace was saying stay at home, uh, what we heard was that our customers needed help. So we we listened to that. We dove deep in, into their feedback. Uh, we reinvented our product offering and we implemented quickly. This is a quick timeline of some of the chain, chain of events that we uh, saw uh, early on in you know, March 13th. Um, we went to work. We heard feedback from uh, various channels that um, you know, there was a combination of fear and doubt and uncertainty and that started to shift to need and pain points and uh, which which then shifted to people going stir crazy. Uh, so for us, we 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 really focused in the moment on uh, what people were saying and um, how we could help them solve their problems. So a combination of activities that we executed on, we reinvented our product offering. We focused heavily on on many of the the um, the areas that Guesty um, excels well at. You know, pre-stay, everything around pre-stay, um, the check-in form. Um, enabling us to quickly and easily extend stays in, in a very transparent and auto automated form um, and reporting. Uh, you know, what gets measured gets done. And if you don't know the data, it's really hard to act. And Guesty has been a um, you know, pivotal tool for us in, in providing that visibility and enabling us to really understand our customers, but also uh, the data along the way. So um, you know, huge value there. And 
you know, the stay extension side of things was was integral and um, strategic to our business and in, in which um, you know it certainly helped offset some of the immediate impact but uh, in parallel it, it was actually what people needed and, and wanted um, many of our our customers stayed for months on end without us even really asking uh, with the exception of saying hey um, we have a home available uh, do you want to your home is available, you know, over the course of the next couple of weeks. And the reason being is our calendars were at hundred percent occupancy before going into COVID within our markets, it was peak season. Um, there were a number of shifts around say cancellations in, in certain ways, which everyone felt. Uh, but in parallel, there was a spike. There was a spike of inquiries, a radical spike in inquiries actually. So you had this, this radical shift in uh, interest and, and, and then fear and doubt. Uh, but what we did was quickly extended stays and our, our calendars have been at um, nearly 100% occupancy in, over the course of the last five months. We focused heavily on operational efficiency um, you know, from a business model perspective, the, especially in a time like this, you have to dive deep into to operational uh, efficiency and effectiveness. In parallel, we communicated. We, we communicate with our customers frequently and often uh, to the extent that I personally kind of shut down everything uh, around me and I focus heavily, heavily on our customers. And um, so people needed guidance, people needed support, and um, we, we look to help them and, and fill that void. Integrate and automate. Um, you know, this COVID enabled us to, to one, focus deeply on our customers um, in a way that we, we, we were previously, but it was amplified. A uh, couple with enabled us it, uh, to, to focus on our core operating system. So uh, how data flows and how systems and tech stacks are connected. And you know, Guesty has really been at the center of that. We have, uh, we have a number of uh, proprietary kind of integrations with uh, internal systems and front end consumer products, but in parallel, it, it integrates with all of our core operating uh, platforms. So. Um, big fans and, and users of AirDNA, uh, Allaware, um, so for, for call and text, um, links, links for smart home tech, uh, automated locks and check-ins and, and all of that. So, you know, the, the devil is in the details here, but at the end of the day, it works and we saw results. And I think the more and more that you can reduce friction and, and um, you know, breakdowns between systems, uh, the better. And Guesty and, and the integrations that you guys have out of the box today, coupled with uh, your flexible API, uh, huge benefit. And here's just some, some coverage and kind of how we spoke about our new offering during COVID. And then... You know, at the end of the day, um, for us, it, it's it's really about continuing this new evolution and 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 being agile and essentially shape shifting and in the moment. Um, COVID COVID's going to stick around with respect to the impact of COVID, and I think the best thing that everything can do in the moment is is they can play to win, not just survive. And uh, the way to do that is, is by uh, surrounding yourself with great partners, great people, and getting laser focused on your customers. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. And if I'm allowed to compliment you back, it's been pretty amazing to see how quickly in March you guys really pivoted into listening to your customers and listening to the new travel personas out there and really shift your entire focus. And it's been a pleasure supporting you on that. And it's amazing to see how much the media also picked it up. And, and covered that. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to pass the ball to Richard Marshall, uh, my friend in Cape Town, South Africa, surrounded by penguins and biltong. Um, and uh, Richard is the founder of Knox Rentals and he's going to share a little bit about what they have seen. Again, different season, uh, another continent, but very interesting trends and also how he used technology uh, to bypass some of the challenges. Richard, just take yourself off mute and share your screen and we're ready to go. Hi everyone. Uh, thank you, Omar. Thanks to the Guesty team for putting this together. My name is Richard Marshall. I, I founded a company called Knox Rentals based in Cape Town in 2004, about four years before Airbnb was founded. Uh, we haven't grown quite as quickly, but we're, we're very proud of the operation we do have. It's a boutique vacation rental management company focusing on luxury and ultra-luxury villas and typically concentrating on leisure travelers. 
When we started vacation rentals were still pretty marginal in Cape Town. It was primarily dealt with by real estate firms without any focus on hospitality or guest experience. And um, we've, we've been focused on service. Like our vision has been to provide a service as good as any five-star hotel in the privacy of a luxury villa. And as a result, the primary measure in our business is guest satisfaction. We, we use something called Net Promoter Score to track guest satisfaction. It's a system which I'm an enormous fan of and would recommend anyone check out. But essentially, we have a relentless focus on happy guests. And everything we do in the business is built to maximize that. We believe that once we're able to consistently delight our guests, everything else in the business becomes a hygiene factor. It's massively important to make sure that your product is well distributed to OTAs and to the trade, which is obviously where an integration with GST helps a lot. We have to actively build our own direct uh, to, to customer channels. It's vital to have an engaged team and to, that, that believes in the mission. And um, it's important to stay current and to innovate. And you have to take advantage of the rapid changes in the marketplace. But ultimately, our belief is that if we're able to delight our guests, revenue and profits will be a natural byproduct. It's, it's part of our DNA and it feeds through to everything we do. So for us, the, the guests are our clients and the property owners are our partners in providing a phenomenal experience. Having been involved in the industry since 2004, we've had a lot of exposure to various systems. Uh, we started our business using Excel and subsequently moved through several other products, including developing our own system and channel manager, which we subsequently sold. What ultimately led us to choose Guesty as our tech partner is automation. It helps us automate, automate all the routine tasks, meaning that the team can focus the time spent on delighting guests instead. And what I'd say where we've derived most of our value is the auto message functionality. Um, we've had incredible cooperation from Matthew Olash and his team, and we've heavily customized the feature to go well beyond standard arrival and departure communications with, with owners and guests. And just some examples. In, in our business, tour operators and travel agents are still an important source of business. Um, but not having direct contact with guests can create a lot of issues, especially around facilitating efficient check-ins. And in our segment, uh, in the luxury segment, uh, we, or certainly in South Africa, we're still doing 95% of our check-ins in person. And even where we have automated check-in, we'll often have representatives go to the property the following day to, to do a check-in just to build on the customer service aspect. So with respect to this, we've built a series of order messages relentlessly chasing agents for all the details required in order to create a seamless experience for the guests. All of our properties are dedicated housekeepers providing daily servicing. Um, they're not guest users and they're not overly technically proficient, but they're without a doubt the most important touch point for a guest with our company. You know, a guest may have a few interactions with our reservations team and with the host checking them in, but by far the most important person is the person that they're seeing several times a day for the duration of their stay, and that is the housekeeping team. Um, to improve our, our housekeeping services, we've built automated text messages to all of our housekeepers, giving all the details about upcoming reservations, including guest names, room makeup, preferences, that type of thing to ensure that they can greet the guests by name and, and really dial up the guest experience. Then we've got uh, on the financial side, we use exported reports, the reports that you were demoing earlier, where we use them to automatically, automatically populate our accounting systems. We've also developed into the guest API to allow for, amongst other things, automated collection of net promoter scores. So these are just some of the initiatives that we've used uh, to save us hundreds of hours every month. And it's allowed us to increase portfolio size without adding headcount. But more importantly, it's allowed us to shift that staff time from doing routine uh, repetitive activities to activities that directly impact the guest experience. And it's helped us maintain a net promoter score of in excess of 80 for the past two years, which is pr pretty big. The other 
powerful feature, powerful VST feature that adds a lot of value to us, I'd say is the, the unified inbox. Um, the efficiency of having a centralized location to access and deal with all guest comms, regardless of the channel or the platform is invaluable and it ensures that nothing slips through the cracks. Then one of our biggest challenges in scaling like a luxury vacation rental operation has been around product knowledge. So as the team grows and the portfolio grows, it's become more and more difficult for each member of staff to effectively sell each property. So things specifics like exact amenities or you know, little things like the number of stairs in the property, the precise pool size, the broadband speed are all important, but it's far too much information to put out all under listing. So our approach with respect to that has been to use the guest inbox, the unified inbox, and to save all of this information onto saved replies, which ensures that every consultant can work with precision, despite potentially never even having been to the property. And then lastly, but importantly in our opinion, is that to build a brand, it's important to have a consistent style and tone. So we consider ourselves a casual but professional company. And all of our communication reflects that. And it's difficult to maintain when we've got multiple agents working together. So we've used the save replies not only to minimize the amount of work needed to be done by our consultants, but also to try and build a consistent style and tone for all of the communications coming out of the business. In terms of COVID, uh, the last six months, like most of the rest of the industry, it's been a dramatic impact for us. Um, this shows our reservation flow in 2019, followed by 2020. We started feeling the effect from early March with cancellations and curtailments. And from the 27th of March, South Africa went into a hard lockdown, one of the strictest in the world, I believe, besides China. Uh, from then, we were only allowed to provide self-isolation accommodation or, to, or accommodation to essential service providers. Domestic leisure travel only reopened on the 16th of August um, and international travel reopened on the 1st of October. But at this stage, a lot of our important source markets are still banned. We were lucky in terms of the timing of the crisis, or to date anyway. Uh, we are still a seasonal destination. So here, the blue is our 2019 revenues and red is 2020 revenues. You can see the year started off very strongly with 20 to 25% growth. But then as of March, it fell off a cliff. Um, but we were lucky that that's our traditional, traditionally quiet period. So what happens over the next few months is obviously going to be massively important to us. In terms of the, the kind of key steps that we took uh, with COVID was first and foremost, as a service business, our salaries and wages are the lion's share of our expenses. My partner and I immediately cut our salaries to zero and then we significantly reduced salaries and working hours for everyone else. Um, we communicated with our partners, our property owners, and immediately changed cleaning protocols to ensure that we were reacting to the COVID situation. And then updated our marketing to provide for self-isolation, uh, plus moved a lot of our marketing onto what were traditionally, what are traditionally traditional real estate platforms for longer stays. We've also updated a lot of the processes like the uh, automated check-in forms to ensure that we're complying with all the new reg regulations with respect to contact tracing, et cetera. So this essentially resulted in a shift of about 25% of our portfolio to medium-term and long-term leases. Uh, it's not particularly lucrative for us, but we viewed it purely as an exercise in property retention. And now as uh, we've been allowed to start operating on a leisure basis again so since the 16th of August, we started with a big domestic marketing campaign, firstly retargeting all of the guests that we'd uh, served from, from our domestic market, and then also investing into social, social media marketing, influencer marketing targeted at the domestic market. And as our international destinations open up, we're following the same process in those retargeting existing guests, etc. In terms of where to from here, uh, the, the future is obviously massively unclear, but we've got a number of initiatives that we're working on. 
First, uh, we're looking to expand our footprint to include destinations within driving distance of Cape Town. So we're currently very dependent on international and fly and domestic travelers. And we'd like to diversify our offering to offer more drive to products that can be used by local Cape Townians. Then um, what we've seen is that the COVID crisis has, has hit local property prices. Um, that together with historically low interest rates, we, we're seeing some really interesting opportunities to buy properties. And we're working together with a lot of our existing partners who are cash rich to purchase properties at deep discounts in anticipation of the market returning to something more normal. And then I guess my, my analogy for, for any shock in business is uh, it's a forest fire and the fire's cleared the ground. So if you're still alive at this point, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to expand with much less competition. So we're putting a fair bit of emphasis onto property acquisition. It obviously is uh, challenging to sell property owners uh, on short-term rentals currently, but if you can sell them on the long-term potential, I think there's no better time for, for acquisition. And then lastly, despite the pandemic, I think that the, the business case for vacation rentals is better than ever. And people's desire to travel and connect hasn't gone away. And I believe that vacation rentals are the ideal accommodation in the post-pandemic world, especially when you take into account social distancing. But interestingly also, the opportunities for combining travel and remote work. You know, this move to work from home has led to a an interesting number of inquiries coming into our business from people that are looking to, to decamp and spend significantly longer in Cape Town. So yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. Um, I've put all my contact details up on the screen. So anyone is welcome to, to reach out, please feel free to reach out. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. We really appreciate that. And with that, let's actually move to the discussion because I see a lot of questions to everybody here on the panel. So again, uh, Alex and Richard, thank you for sharing with us your experience and your wisdom. I want to start by asking you if I'm now a property manager on the line here. I haven't done all the beautiful things that you have done. I haven't identified this early enough. Is it too late to start? And if I do start now to adjusting myself to the new normal, what would be the first thing that I do? And that's actually to all three of you. So let's go. Alex, Richard, and then Joseph, first action item that you would do as a property manager and now trying to adjust to the new normal. Alex, let's go. Yeah, I don't think it's, um, it, it's an option whether or not to adjust. You, we, we have to adjust to, to, to thrive um, in parallel to, to survive. Um, so, uh, you know, every day that you wait, there's, um, you know, you're, you're not iterating and innovating and, and uh, aligning with the shifts that are happening in the marketplace that are here to stay. So I'd reach out to, to Guesty for sure and understand you know, how um, you know, we've committed in uh, time and resources and, um, you know, partnered with, with Guesty for a reason. And um, that's because they're helping us, you know, solve problems and scale our business and, um, you know, everything that we just mentioned on the call. So I don't think it's a choice. I think you have to. So scaling through technology, thank you for that. Richard, any thoughts about what would be the number one action item that you should take if you're now trying to adjust to the new normal? First thing I'd do is uh, put myself in the, the position of my guests and think deeply about what's changed on their side and what actions we can take to address what are obviously going to be a, a changed environment, changed needs and changed concerns from a guest perspective. Joseph, you're seeing quite a lot of companies yourself uh, being uh, the head of sales in the United States, the market that is recovering the fastest. What have you heard out there or you think is the most important step to take as a, as a first action item for a property manager? Yeah, thank you, Omar, for the question. I think um, property management companies are, first of all, they're looking at a property management software that is much more agile, much more flexible, think out of the box. Um, that are able to support uh, different type of, of inventory and different type of use cases. As we've been seeing post COVID, uh, you have to be much more flexible. Um, and it's very important, and Richard mentioned that, is to be able to support in the new normal um, the change in the guest journey. So the guest journey has changed tremendously from their initial inquiry 
um, booking confirmation, uh, prior to the stay, during the stay, and, and how you maintain that relationship after their, their checkout. Um, and there are different challenges along the way. Um, and it's uh, important more than ever uh, to make sure that you address these issues um, for the guests. Um, and, and I think that's uh, one of the biggest things that, that I see uh, with property management companies at the moment. Thank you, Joseph. Richard, here's a question to you specifically. In the U.S., we are seeing travel demand pick back up. What is happening in South Africa? What is the pattern that you are seeing right now? And how does that change your strategy? So we've, we've got basically, uh, like I mentioned, our product is aimed f f firmly at uh, international flying guests and at domestic flying. We don't cater very much to, to drive in destination guests. We do a small amount of it, but very, very, very little. So what we've seen besides the, um, you know, obviously what's been unique over the past five, six months has been people looking for a place to, to wait out the lockdown if their property wasn't suitable. But in terms of our traditional business, we are still severely hampered in terms of restrictions, flight restrictions and banned countries. So we probably only have about 20% of our traditional source markets are able to reach our country at the moment. Now, what's that? That's obviously had a, had, a, had a large impact to us. Domestic travel demand is soft, but it's picking up slowly. The average rates are significantly down, though, and most of the domestic travel that we're seeing is still weekend breaks, that type of thing, rather than the extended stays that a lot of other markets are experiencing. But we do expect to see more extended stays coming as you know, we move into our more traditionally peak period. International bookings are slowly increasing. So we are getting international bookings, um, despite the majority of our source markets not being open. We are getting bookings from, from um, a lot of our source, a lot of the banned source markets as well, uh, who are obviously optimists, believing that uh, the, the, the flight routes will open up. But uh, with that, we've obviously seen a, an enormous emphasis on cancellation policies. And we've had to make a big shift there in order to accommodate people with the, the uncertainty. Absolutely. Alex, back to you. As you said, March 13, you were really among the first one to identify this new trend of the isolators as the new travel persona. And you base a lot of your marketing and operation based on listening to what's happening in the market. Have you seen any new trend in the, new, in, the, in the last few weeks or months? Who is the new persona that is emerging out there that you guys are identifying? Yes, the, the, the trends, I would say the trends are consistent in our markets anyways, that um, uh, with, with the trends that we saw previously, um, the, the patterns of which they happen are different. Uh, meaning our, our booking lead time used to be 100 days plus in, in our markets. Now it's weeks and if you, um, or days. And if you, if you think through kind of the, the correlation between longer term stays and, and shorter term stays, like thinking through that dynamic and how you adjust some of your operating um, uh, practices to align with that short term, uh, short term stays do not go well with long term stays. You know, if you have a short term stay at impacts a long-term stay. So thinking through that dynamic and, uh, you know, in parallel, um, you know, every market's different. And I, I think for, for us and everyone on the, on the call and to your first question, I think I misinterpreted it a little bit, but um, my, my, my perspective would be like spend an entire day going through every single question and response from your customer and uh, try to understand what they're actually saying because what they're saying on the surface might not be what they're, they're trying to say. And I think that's a, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for everyone to, um, to, to just learn and recognize that everything before March goes out the window and we need to be mindful of that going forward. Absolutely. Richard, another one to you. You discussed a lot the fact that a lot of open communication and very consistent communication is a big thing for you. Um, how is the, the using the, the outsourced guest communication, the guest guest communication and the, and the unified inbox really complement that in terms of creating consistency between your 
team and our team. And what are you doing with all this free time once you actually move some of the communication to the guest team? Yeah, well, look, I think you, you're right. For me, consistency is massively important. I think it's, uh, it's, it's important. That's where we've used the Sabre players within the unified inbox to ensure that we are getting a consistency of response, a consistency regardless of what the, the communication platform is or who's dealing with whatever the inquiry is. Um, yeah, in terms of the, the, the extra time, uh, I thought I would have an enormous amount of extra time, but I have uh, three children at home and uh, no domestic help over the course of the lockdown, so that accounted for an enormous amount of my, my spare time. In terms of the, the business, we've, we've been trying to you know, dig into a lot of the projects that we've had on the back burner. I think every business has a lot of housekeeping, a lot of projects that, uh, although important, are often set aside because of the urgency of what's happening in the now. And we've tried to use the, the lockdown period as a, an opportunity to go through that, that stock of back burner projects and look at uh, where, we, where we can really improve the business for, for when we're back open for business. Thank you, and I can assure you that we're working on our tech team for a solution around kids management. That's our next after property management. I'll let you know how, how that works. <laughs> Alex, another question to you. you. You just mentioned the big shift between, you know, bookings made 100 days in advance to less seven days just before check-in. It's a huge difference, especially to a company like yourself that is all about the elite experience, differentiate yourself through the experience, getting ready for the stay, creating a new asset class and a new experience, a new level of experience for your guests. How did you have to actually change your entire operation and what changes have you made to be able to accommodate last minute bookings in, in inventory like, uh, like you guys have established? Prioritizing what we focus on internally, um, first and foremost, and, and then um, uh, leaning into leaning into the change and 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 figuring out how to to, to turn an, an an obstacle upside down, and having a team that's aligned with that. Um, but it 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 meant investing in systems and tech in ways that we uh, were doing, but at a at a faster clip going forward, um, and, and and tech that was flexible, and agile that aligned with kind of our agile operating principles and um, just being mindful of those, the, the, the change and figuring out how to align people, process and systems. I don't know if that gave you uh, a, a very direct answer, but it, it comes down to operations and mindset and, um, and, and saying no to some things and um, saying yes to others and getting a deep understanding of how to prioritize those. And yeah, leveraging the tools that you have in front of you in that moment, but always being willing to iterate. Fierce prioritization, I like that. One last question that came from the audience to, uh, to all three of you actually, and we're gonna wrap up with that. Um, if you had to guess where are we going to be six months from now in terms of where the market is and what is the number one need that you have from technology and what are you gonna leverage the most? what would it be? I know it's a complex question with, with two things. So where are we going to be six months from now as a market, as a category, as, as property managers? B, what do you think you're going to leverage even more six months from now from a technology standpoint? Um, maybe let's start uh, 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 with you, Richard. What do you think? Uh, well, I think that's going to be very, very destination dependent. Um, my... Uh, my personal sense is that within six months, I would imagine we're going to be um, well over the, the, the kind of crisis situation uh, and should hopefully have travel um, right back up. <clears throat> Although what I've seen is people are estimating that it'll take a good two years to reach pre-COVID levels. Um, no, no expert, but I expect that the vacation rental carry uh, category itself will definitely benefit from the from the COVID situation. I think there will obviously be a lot of people who are generally re reluctant to travel, but I think of the people that are wanting to travel, I think vacation rentals will become a much more interesting category to many, many people. 
I think that there's going to be an interesting shift in terms of uh, people combining travel with work. Uh, I believe that the work from home and a lot of people's eyes have been opened at their ability to work effectively without going into an office. And I think that that's going to introduce a lot of work, a lot of flexibility in workspaces and within educational um, institutions. And I think that that is probably a trend that we'll see over the next several years where we're seeing extended stays and people not traveling purely for leisure purposes, but looking for properties where they, where they can decamp and continue to work and combine it with a, 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 leisure, a leisure trip. Um, yeah, I'm not certain in terms of what specific technologies we'd be looking to, to leverage over the, the, the next six months. Besides, you know, the, the, the kind of permanent sharpening of the saw in terms of accessing more distribution channels, I think there may, there may well be uh, considerations bet between the overlap between uh, vacation rentals and more traditional real estate. I think that's something that, that might see, and we certainly saw benefits from listing all of our vacation rental stock on traditional real estate channels uh, when, when the... Um, when COVID hit. Um, but yeah, besides that, I uh, can't think of any specific technology that I've got earmarked for the next six months. Absolutely. And in a way, Richard, that's the, the new age where the Wi-Fi strength is sometimes more important than the location of the listing, who would have believed. Uh, but absolutely agreed. And, and thank you for that. I think also the longer stays and the flexible inventory management that Joseph presented before is exactly part of that. Alex, any thoughts on your end? Yeah. I, you know, wow, I, I would say the last six months was hard for um, you know, many people in, in our sector. It's the next six months and the years ahead are, it's the most amazing opportunity um, that, that we could ever have. And uh, I, I honestly believe it's, it's kind of a once in a lifetime pivotal moment um, within kind of home, hospitality, um, hotel, and, and, you know, everything in between. Um, COVID amplified, um, it, it, COVID amplified our kind of place in the world as, as, as a uh, community and, and that's lodging in general. And, um, you know, I think this presents an opportunity for uh, the world to think differently about um, the roof over their head and where they're going and why they're, they're going there and who they're going with. Um, so amazing opportunity in front of, in front of everyone on, you know, this call, um, I would say, you know, be open-minded and, um, and, and continue to follow patterns. I, I spoke deeply in the last year about the convergence that I was seeing between home and hospitality or home and hotel. Um, I think the, in earlier this year, I, I, I spoke about the convergence between, um, you know, a primary, primary residence and a secondary home. I, I don't think it's one or the other anymore. It's um, it's it's a home, and how we access that is gonna it's gonna change, and um, it's gonna be driven by what we want as a consumer. So what we are doing over the course of the next six months is um, we're focusing on kind of our existing customers, um, uh, as as well as you know, new new uh, customer growth, but getting the right customers in the door. Um, so understanding who we are and who we want uh, in our homes in which if, if you create a uh, amazing experience, you have a customer for life and uh, it's a heck of a lot easier to fill 12 um, one month stays than it is um, 60 um, uh, short stays. So at the end of the day, it needs to align with your audience. So I'm not suggesting that that's for everyone, um, but yeah, continuous focus on our, on our customers. Perfect. Thank you so much, Alex, and I see that we're already about 15 minutes after the hour, so we're going to cut it here. I really want to thank both of you, and I also want to thank everybody that joined us. Uh, we also had hundreds of people on our social media channel, so thank you for joining us the streaming uh, in there. And of course, the hundreds of people who are going to watch that later and, and register to get this uh, recording. Once again, you can find more information about our events at guest.com slash events, and then a myriad of, of content in our uh, coronavirus directory at uh, on the Guesty website where you can find a lot of information. Uh, Richard, 
Alex, Joseph, thank you so much for joining us from all over the world and sharing some of your insights today. And I hope that we'll be, we'll be here back again to see more recovery data and have even better conversations. So once again, thank you so much for joining us.